So we're going to be reading the story of Peter Pan. Not the whole thing though, just an excerpt, which means a part of it. And it's actually not Peter Pan, it's actually from a novel called Peter and Wendy, which is where Peter Pan actually comes from. Now, before we begin reading, I want to remind you guys, what is a key event? So a key event is an important event in the story. So it's not a minor detail, it's something that the story has to have in order to progress. Now, the other thing I want to remind you of is what is a summary? So a summary is a brief paragraph that reviews the important facts or key events in a story. So key event is an important event in the story. A summary reminds us what just happened, that brief paragraph that reviews those important facts or events. And our last thing is, how do you make connections between two versions of a story? So we can compare and contrast key events and characters in both stories. So let's begin with our story of Come Away, Come Away from Peter Pan. Remember, as we're reading, we're thinking, what are the key parts or the key events that happen in Peter Pan? Before we begin, though, we have this little introduction right here. Just give us some background information. So let me zoom in for us. The well-known character Peter Pan, the adventurous boy from Neverland who refuses to grow up, first began his literary journey life in a 1902 novel for adults. Then, he found fame in a 1904 play called Peter Pan, which was turned to a successful children's fantasy novel, Peter and Wendy, in 1911. Next came a Broadway musical, a TV movie, and an animated film about Peter, which made his character even more popular. In this chapter, early in the novel, Peter and the fairy Tinkerbell fly into the bedroom of a young girl named Wendy Darling, who lives in London, England. They are in search of Peter's shadow, which they left behind on a recent secret visit. Note how the narrator in the passage from chapter 3 sometimes interrupts the story, addressing the reader directly. So this paragraph gives me some background information on the story of Peter Pan. I learned that the excerpt I'm about to read is from a fantasy novel. There's clues about the characters, the setting, and the plot, which is offered in this introduction. Peter and Tinkerbell are in Wendy Darling's bedroom, looking for Peter's shadow. I will underline this information. Now I know what is going on as I begin to read this excerpt. So I'm going to underline what I think is some important facts there. And what were those important facts? Peter and Tinkerbell are in Wendy Darling's bedroom looking for Peter's shadow. So that's this part right here. They are in search of Peter's shadow, which they left behind on a secret visit. Woo! And where are they? Because that's the setting. That's kind of important. So I'm going to underline this. Peter and the fairy Tinkerbell are in the bedroom of Wendy Darling. Ooh, I am not doing a good job on this underlining part. So I have my setting, the plot, why they're there, and my characters. So let's begin. Number one. I'm going to zoom out a bit. I, oh, oops, there was another light in the room now, a thousand times brighter than the night lights. And in the time we have taken to say this, it had been in all the drawers of the nursery, looking for Peter's shadow, rummaged the wardrobe, and turned every pocket inside out. It was not really a light, as it made this light by flashing about so quickly. But when it came to rest for a second, you saw it was a fairy, no longer than your hand, but still growing. It was a girl called Tinkerbell, who was exquisitely gowned in a skeleton leaf. So, I'm not quite sure what a skeleton leaf is, so I may think about that as I go on and see if they give more description for Tinkerbell. Now, I am introduced to Tinkerbell in this paragraph. I learned that she is a fairy a thousand times brighter than the nightlights. This descriptive language helps me visualize the scene. Tinkerbell is looking around the nursery for Peter's shadow. This is the key event in this paragraph, so I'll put a number one next to it. Next to the line, it had been in all the drawers in the nursery, looking for Peter's shadow, rummaged the wardrobe, and turned every pocket inside out. So I'm going to put a number one, I'm going to type that in there. Where did it go? There we go. 
And so it shows up better for me. I'm going to just change that color to something that's really going to pop out. So I like, hmm, I guess I'm going to do red. And then I'm just going to drag it right here. So that's my first thing that's happened. So now let's go on and use a summary for this. So I can summarize what's happened on this page. Sure, it was only one paragraph, but I'm still going to put my summary in there. So I'm going to double click right here, and my summary, what I'm going to put is what just happened. So Peter and Tinkerbell are in search of Peter's shadow, which they left in Wendy's Darling's room. Tinkerbell is flying around the room looking for it. And if I want, I can make it a little bit bigger. So let's do 14. So notice how I used that first event to do my descriptive summary of what's happened. So now if I forget or I need to come back, I can read that summary and jog my memory. So let's head on to our next part, number two. A moment after the fairy's entrance, the window was blown open by the breathing of the little stars and Peter dropped in. He carried Tinkerbell part of the way and his hand was still messy with the fairy dust. Now, I think that's kind of important right here because now Peter's been introduced. The window's been blown open and Peter drops in. So I'm going to put a number two right by Peter drops in. And I guess that's as close as it's going to let me get. And remember, I'm using that red so that it pops out. Now on to paragraph three to see if we can find a key event in paragraph three. Tinkerbell, he called softly after making sure that the children were asleep. Tink, where are you? She was in a jug for the moment and liking it extremely. She had never been in a jug before. Now, is there anything important in there? As of right now, um, I don't really think her being in a jug is important. Maybe it will be later on. But it is showing me that Peter Pan is looking for Tinkerbell. It's telling me why he's in there. So I'm gonna say that's my important part. My number three, and I'm going to put it right next to Tink, where are you? Oh, do come out of that jug and tell me, do you know where they put my shadow? So here, we knew from this beginning part that they were looking for the shadow. It told me that Tinkerbell was looking for his shadow, but it's just reminding me that Peter Pan's looking for his shadow. Now, I really don't think that's important because we said it in this first paragraph. So I'm gonna leave that out as an important event, but I do need to put my summary here. So what's happened in here? Well, Peter Pan has burst through the window and not just that, but he's looking for Tinkerbell. Well, she sits in a jug. So we're going to put that for a summary. Peter bursts through the window. And what's he doing? I'm gonna just drag this so it doesn't keep going. He is looking for Tinkerbell, who I'm gonna put Tink because that's what he calls her as a nickname. So we see that there's these two names that refer to the same person. Who is relaxing in a jug. They're still looking for his shadow. So now we're good to go on to our next chunk. So let's head on to this next paragraph section, five, six, seven. So I'm gonna slide on over. The loveliest tinkle as of golden bells answered him. It is fairy language. You ordinary children can never hear it, but if you were to hear it, you would know that you had heard it once before. So we have this part right here, Tink is answering him. So I'm going to put that as our fourth important event. And it's describing really how Tinkerbell is talking, that fairy language. It's not like regular words, so we probably won't be hearing Tinkerbell talk during this story. Paragraph six now. Tink said that the shadow was in the big box. Oh, she found it. 
She meant the chest of drawers, and Peter jumped at the drawers, scattering their contents to the floor with both hands, as King tossed halfpence to the crowd. In a moment, he had recovered his shadow, and in his delight, he forgot that he had shut Tinkerbell up in the drawer. Uh-oh. So, we have this part right here. There's kind of a lot of important events here. So they have found his shadow. So I'm going to say that's number five. And Peter is grabbing his shadow. So he's recovered it. So that's going to be number six. They find his shadow. Tinkerbell tells him where it is. And then he recovers it. So I'm going to put that right next to, in a moment, he had recovered his shadow. And in his delight, he forgot that he had shut Tinkerbell in the drawer. Now, paragraph seven. And they're going to do our summary. If he thought at all, and I don't believe he ever thought, it was that he and his shadow, when brought near each other, would join like drops of water. And when they did, he was not appalled. He tried to stick it on with soap from the bathroom, but that also failed. A shudder passed through Peter, and he sat on the floor and cried. So here we have this event where he's trying to get his shadow together, but it's not working. So I'm going to put number seven with, whoops, and I'm going to put it right next to, I'm moving the wrong one, there we go, nope, let me see, there we go, so I'm going to put it right next to how he's trying to attach his shadow, he tried to stick it on with soap from the bathroom, but that failed, we could also, if we want, we could say a shutter passed through and he sat on the floor crying as a main event, but I'm going to put number seven as because there's connected to that crying of him not getting his shadow attached. Now, we are going to summarize this page. So what do we have for a summary? Well, I have this for my summary. Peter finds his shadow, and I'm going to use my dictation function. Let me see if it'll let me do it while I'm on my Zoom. Yeah, and it doesn't look... Tinkerbell tells Peter that his shadow is in the chest of drawers, period. Peter grabs his shadow and tries to stick it back on with soap, but when that doesn't work, comma, he begins to cry, period. So now, since I use my dictation function, remember I always have to go back and I have to make sure that my periods and capitals are in the right spot. So Tinkerbell is two words in our story. And the rest looks like it's good. So that's my summary for this page. So now we have one more page that we're going to look at. So let's look at paragraph 8 through 15 and find those important events. His, his sobs woke Wendy and she sat up in bed. She was not alarmed to see a stranger crying on the nursery floor. She was only pleasantly interested. So this is going to be my next event. It's actually going to be number eight. And what is it? Well, Wendy, another main character in our story, she notices that Peter is crying. So let me... There we go. Boy, she said courteously, why are you crying? Peter could be exceedingly polite also, having learned the grand manner at fairy ceremonies, and he rose and bows to her beautifully. She was much pleased and bowed beautifully to him from the bed. So I have this part here. They're introducing each other. They're being polite. So I'm going to put this because it's their first interaction with one another. What's your name? He asked. Wendy Moira Angela Darling, she replied with some satisfaction. What is your name? Peter Pan. She was already sure that he must be Peter, but it did seem a comparatively short name. Is that all? Yes, he said rather sharply. He felt for the first time it was the shortest name. So that rather sharply means that he's kind of getting an attitude. So I'm going to put this right here. Their introductions. And yeah, this is going to be what I have as my 10th important event. They first introduced each other with their bowing. And now they're sharing their names with each other. And so there's another important thing that happened, though, that I'm moving number 10 down to, because you'll see as we continue tomorrow, it's going to be a catalyst. It's going to be something that's going to influence how Peter reacts. And it's when 
she kind of questions him about his name. He says, is that all? So she's questioning, saying, is there anything else with your name? Is it a little longer? So I have my events here, 8, 9, and 10. So that's going to be my summary that I'll write now. Peter's crying wakes up Wendy, period. Wendy asks him why he's crying, to which Peter and her bow to each other and introduce themselves, period. After Peter Pan tells her his name, comma, Wendy asks, is there any more to it, period? Peter gets a little frustrated, period. Now, as I read that, I realize it's kind of a long summary. So if I wanted, I could go back and I could take some things out, but I'm gonna leave it for now because we're gonna revisit this summary tomorrow. We're going to review all of these summaries and we're gonna continue our story. So good luck today, guys. And what I want you to do is you are going to answer some questions below in your guys's OneNote notebook. I'll talk to you guys later.